Okay, so you need to cut out two for your outer and two for your lining. So these are 15 inch squares. Um, so I've two for the outer, two for the lining. Now I recommend on the outer one, on the outer two, if your fabric is directional, so pointing in that direction, uh, facing towards the top, then I suggest you overlock the sides. I've just overlocked mine all the way around. Uh, I can have this fabric any way around I want. But if yours is directional, if you only want to overlock the appropriate bits, then you can just overlock the two sides. You don't need to do the top and the bottom, do the sides. You don't need an overlocker to do that. You can do that on your sewing machine. When you've done that, um, they all need to be interfaced. I've used just a regular uh, lightweight non-woven interfacing. This is not my generally my interfacing of choice. I normally like a cotton woven interfacing. It gives you a much nicer feel, but I'd run out at the time of this filming. So, but this works. This, as long as you interface it properly, according to the instructions of your interfacing, this works okay. So make sure you interface all four pieces. Okay, so we're going to use an overcast foot. You've not got an overlocker. You can zigzag the edge, but you might have one of these and you don't realise it. So this is an overcast foot. It's foot C on my machine. I would assume that's the same on most machines. But check your manual. It's got a little guide there, fabric guide. And it's got a little um, bar there and it stitches across that bar. Okay, so I'll just stick that in my machine. Just a clip on. Okay, now the stitch I'm going to use is this one here, stitch seven, which is an overcast stitch. It sort of gives you a sort of like an overlocked edge. Okay, so there you go, you can see it there, and it tells me on my machine which foot I need as well. You probably find it'll tell you all this in your manual. Okay, so you've got your foot guide here. So I've got my machine set to do this stitch. So if you put your fabric edge up against the guide. Now I like to do the first couple of stitches just to be on the safe side. I like to do them by hand, make sure I'm not going to hit that bar. It shouldn't do anyway, but I still like to check. And then just keep your fabric up against that guide. Try to keep it straight. Try not to let your fabric push up too much against that guide. You just want it to touch that guide. If you push it and it curls up, then it will fold over the edge of your fabric as you're doing it. Okay, so there we go. That gives you kind of an overlocked, like an overcast type stitch on the edge which should stop it fraying, which we need. You don't really need to do it all the way down if you don't want to. You could do it half the way down because uh, we only need it for the drawstring section, but I'm just going to go all the way down and then it's sealed. Okay, so once you've overlocked, you only need to do that on the outside panels. If you want to, you, you only need to overlock the sides and then you probably only need to go to about six inches down. Um, because it's basically for the draw cord panel. So this section here, where the hole is on the draw cord panel, it folds under and you want this to, to be neat. I've top stitched on this one, but it's better, it's easier to do, to do it this way. Um, it just stops it fraying when the cord's pulling in and out. Okay, otherwise you have a raw edge. So as long as you uh, overlock down on both sides, about six inches, just on the outside panels, you don't need to do it on the lining panels. Okay, so once you've done any overlocking that you're going to do, like I say, at maximum you need to do six inches if you want. I've done mine all the way around because I've got an overlocker. If you're doing it on your sewing machine, you might only want to do um, where it's absolutely needed. So maybe the top six inches just on the sides, on both outer pieces, not on the inner pieces, okay? And then I'm just going to turn them over, right sides together, 
this is my top here that's the that's the right way around that I'm having mine I'm just turning it sideways to show we'll just write there T for top so you know I've got it the right way around put top there um, I'm going to put some markings on this is easier to just do it sideways this is just where you're going to start and stop uh, sewing so your first mark you want to put is at two two and a half inches down from the top this is not the side this is the top so two and a half inches down and then put another mark at three and a quarter inches down so I've already done it here so if we're doing it from the top then you're not confused so two and a half and three point two five three and a quarter do that on both sides you only need to do it on on one side so that when you're sewing this together um, you start in here sew down to your first line back stitch jump across back stitch here uh, sew all the way around till you get up to this line back stitch here jump across back stitch there and up to the top okay so that's all those lines are for because you don't want to stitch these sections here okay so once you've drawn those marks on you make sure that your fabrics are right sides together if it's directional um, this is my side this is the top mark the top and bottom if necessary to make sure that your your fabrics pointing in the right way and then I'm just either I'm going to clip mine all the way around so either clip it or pin it okay so that's now clipped and ready to go I'll show the first little bit and then you know what I'm talking about when I say jump across um, and then when you've done all that you can meet me back here right, make sure that you've put your regular foot back on and you've switched back to your straight stitch I'm just stitching it a regular stitch length now you can do I've allowed for a half an inch uh, seam allowance so you can either stitch it half an inch, quarter of an inch, width of foot. That really won't make any difference. Your bag, if you do a smaller seam allowance, your bag will just come out slightly larger. I'm just going to do width of foot. But like I say, I have allowed for up to a half an inch uh, seam allowance. So I'm just going to back stitch at the top. And then I'm going to stitch down to this line. Stop when I get to the line, back stitch, a couple of stitches, and then I go back again and then lift my needle, lift my foot, jump across, line it back up with the next line so that your needle goes into the next line, and then do a couple of stitches, a couple of back stitches, and then carry on stitching all the way to the bottom and then repeat that so go all the way round the sides and the bottom don't stitch across the top um, and then meet me back here okay so this is all stitched so this here this bit you've got a thread going across where you jumped across where you left your marks so you need to snip that off and then do the same on the other side Okay, next you need, we're going to just box the corners. So I'm doing a two and a half inch corner. So if you've got a square ruler, this just makes it easier. If not, you can use another kind of ruler and just draw it on like I'm doing here. So line up the two and a half inch line. So this is my corner with the ones on here. Oh, I have these ones in the corner. Line up your two and a half line on your bottom stitch line and the other two and a half inch line on the other stitch line, not at the outer edge for the way I'm doing it here. If you prefer to do corners another way, you can. So draw them on. Now if you need to refer back to these, there is a, a little video on how various ways to do boxed corners. I'll link that in the in the description box down below okay so you draw them on all four two on that side two on that side this is how i like to do it so this will give us a two and a half inch corner it'll give us a finished measurement across the bottom of five inches if you want a wider bottom you could do bigger but if you do bigger it will shorten 
um, the depth of your uh, bag. It will be shallow, a little bit shallower. Okay. We'll put my hand inside. So push that apart to make the corner. So push into the corner. Now as long as you get those points in the side should be lined up so you've got the point of the box corner here and the point of the box corner here and hopefully that will be lined up because you've gone from your stitch line which should be the same on the boat on the bit which will be the same on both sides I'm just going to clip that into place do the same on the other one You see there the line goes straight across so then these should line up in the center I like to have the seams going in opposite directions just make sure on both corners all across the bottom piece not so much not the sides but across the bottom that it goes the same way on both corners then you don't get it twisted Okay, so that's in place. So then you just want to stitch across your line, back stitching at each end, and then meet me back here. Okay, so that's your box corners stitched. I do two lines, I stitch one and then I stitch one uh, to the right side for the outside, uh, uh, outside bag. And then you can just trim those off. That extra line of stitching will make sure it doesn't fray as well. And then that is your outside bag uh, ready to go. Turn it right side out. And have a look. And then you'll have little holes here. So what I suggest you do is just down, open your seams out inside. And you only need to press it as far as just going past there's your gap for your draw cord you only need to press it like um, a couple of inches two or three inches below where your draw cord's going to be just press that seam open do the same on the other one and then it will open um, much much neater okay so there's your opening for your cord and give that go and give that a press and okay, then what's also helpful here is if you've got any glue uh, fabric glue I've got fabric tack just where your you can see there where there's no stitching I'm going to just glue that bit put a bit on the uh, seam uh, there and then you can stick that bit of uh, seam down as well I'm going to do the same on this side just put it where you can see there's no stitching and then press that down and that'll just help keep that all flat so when the draw cords come in going in being pulled through this here the cord pulls against these sections here so that's why we've overlocked it and that's why I'm sticking it down as well gluing it down so I'm just going to do the same on this side okay so now you want to repeat all that on your lining so if you put your two lining pieces right sides together and then you're going to stitch around leave a turning gap I just do the width of my hand because this is only uh, made with lightweight interfacing so it should fit through quite easily so start at the top back stitch sti uh, so down to where your, your mark is, back stitch there, jump across, back stitch, and then up the other side and back stitch there. So you've got your turning gap. Another tip is if you're doing a quarter of an inch or whatever seam allowance that you're doing, so I did width of foot, so I would make sure I start its width of foot at the top. And as I get down to about here, I'll start to bring it out just a little bit, it doesn't have to be much, a couple of millimeters. 
so your seam allowance is slightly wider down here across the bottom and then up the other side but once you start getting up to the other side to about here you need to bring it back in to its exactly the same seam allowance as on the outer bag um, so mine would be width of foot or quarter of an inch or half an inch whichever seam allowance you've done as long as your two top bits match wait till you're a couple of inches down and then you can bring it in a little bit and that helps stop the inside of your bag being um, baggy being baggy okay when you've done your sewing around the outside you need to repeat what we did with your corners uh, on your lining as well so do exactly the same with your corners um, stitch from the uh, draw from the stitch line or however you like to do box corners and then meet me back here when you've done that okay so that's our our lining bag finished so we'll just leave that one um, inside out for now and just set that aside now you need your outer bag and you need it right side out and we're just going to put the it's easier to do this now you can do this after you've put your lining and your bag together but it is easier to do it now because it sits nice and flat on your table so we need to draw the channels for the draw cord now because i'm on black i'm using some white chalk if you're on a lighter fabric you might want to use a marker um like a friction pen this is an iron away pen just remember if you don't stitch directly on the lines when it become if it becomes very cold uh, the lines can reappear when it's really cold but only if it's really cold but then they will disappear again when it warms up um so uh, chalk's a good one to use or a disappearing if you've got a light fabric a marker that disappears with water or just fades in time but the ones that just fade just check that out on a spare bit of fabric first um so I'm going to use chalk because I'm on black and where your your hole is here you need to put some marks at the top and the bottom <coughs> and this should basically be the distance that you did before so two two and a half or thereabouts and then three and a quarter uh, they should be at so I'm just going to mark them first on either side just open up that gap and I'm just going to draw them on and then I'm just going to draw, join the lines basically I'm not going to do anything particularly technical join those lines and then I want to do the same on the other side but before I do I'm going to fold it this way to make sure you get them in the same place because even though you've measured um, it can still end up slightly off kilter so if you fold it down like this and put your markings exactly at the ends of those ones and then turn that over and join those up then that should be right we're going to stitch on these lines afterwards and then you can wipe chalk off with a damp cloth or dust it off depends on the kind of chalk you're using okay so now we've done that you want to take your lining so your lining is wrong side out and your outer bag is right side out so we're going to put your outer bag inside your lining so that they are right sides together And then we're just going to pin or clip them together around the top now i'm alternating my seams so that they nest together nicely so if you do your seams at first make sure your seams line up will look neater clip those and then just finish off clipping all the way all the way around make sure it's flat you could mark your centers on each piece that would probably make it easier and line those up 
Okay, so that's all quit. So then we're just going to sew this around the top and take my free arm off my machine. Now you could sew this up to half an inch, seam allowance, quarter, half, width of foot, whichever you want. It only alters the size of your bag ever so slightly. I'm just going I'm just going to do width of foot. So I'm just going to do a couple of back stitches and then I'm just going to do this all the way around. Okay, and then back stitch there. Okay, so we're now ready for turning, turning this through. Okay, so that's all turned turned through. Now you want to uh, give this a press around the top. What I suggest you do is you roll your um, your lining slightly to the inside like that, slightly to the inside, and press it that way. You don't it, the lining doesn't poke out. You don't top stitch it and have lining showing unless you want to do. So if you just push it in about about an eighth of an inch, uh, so you see the outer fabric on the inside, and then it'll look a bit neater from the outside. So give it all a good press, and then meet me back here. Okay, do bear in mind before you press it, if you've used a, um, an iron-off marker, when you're pressing it, there's a good chance it's going to disappear. Um, so you might have to redraw it on afterwards and um, that's the only downside of an iron away pen if you've put markings on with that you might want to put them on with something else okay so this is all nice and flat now so i'm now going to just um top stitch i'm going to top stitch along the top first before we sew the channel so again i'm just going to go around my free arm i like to start in a seam and I like to bring my thread up from the bottom. In fact, if you want to make sure your thread matches your lining as well, you might want to change your bobbin thread now. Okay, so that didn't all record. So you're going to start, I start in the seam at the side where your gap is for your cord. And then I'm just, I'm starting with both threads out so it doesn't um, nest. And then you're just going to do a couple of back stitches here because there's a bit of stress on this point. Um, and then stitch, follow your line all the way around. And then do exactly the same thing and do it on the other line as well. So you'll have sewed two channels all the way around, but back stitch at the start and the finish on these because, I say, this is where the cord, cord comes out and there's going to be a bit of stress on that. Now I've done that, I'm just going to um, tie off or trim off don't need to tie these ones up because I've backstitched. So I'm just going to trim off these threads. There isn't any at the other end. They'll just be inside. And I jumped across. So I'll just trim that off. Okay, so that's all stitched. So all there is to do now is to add our draw cord. Okay, so I've got some draw cord here. I've got 85 inches of draw cord, so just over um, two metres. Just fold it in half and I'm going to cut it in half. And then feed this through. To feed this through, I've got um, a bodkin. You could use a safety pin. You use a safety pin it's good to wrap sellotape around the end of the cord uh, it helps the safety pin hold and then you're going to start on one side and feed that through one way okay pull it the same length the cord and 
and then on this just start on the opposite side so the opposite side where they're coming out so where you've got your your loop you can see your loop on that side we're going to start on this side now I'll go underneath okay something I've just tried for the first time and it looks like it worked quite well for cord ends if you take your pieces these are the corners I cut out of my lining I've also got the ones I cut out of the outer bag I'm just going to trim trim the seam down and trim the the corner off okay turn this through I'm quite pleased with how this has come out now fold your points inside down to the point in the bottom so that the they're, they're even and then open it sideways turn it sideways and fold that point down just give that a bit of a press with a finger press and then do the same on the other side okay get them shifted them about a bit until you get them even So it lies even like that. That's a little bit smaller than that one. We'll come up a bit. So that everything kind of lines lines up. Put your cord, push your cord ends down inside and have them flat across the top might make it easier if you stick a bit of glue under these seams to hold them in place might just do that just using my Fabri-Tac glue again I'm only using a little bit, just enough to hold that. Okay, you could press that with your iron to make sure everything's nice and crisp. Get your cords, and I'm putting, making sure they're flat next to each other, so then they're, they're not twisted. And I'm going to put them down, put them down inside. And have those in the centre and I'm just going to clip that and then we're just going to sew it so I'm using a three mil stitch length here I don't want it too long but I don't want it too short again I'm going to have my thread ends out because I don't want it nesting because otherwise you'll see that so you want the one from the bottom as well. Okay. About an eighth of an inch from the top. Do a couple of back stitches. Leave your needle down and turn. Going to back stitch over those as well just to be on the safe side so they don't come off. Turn and then back stitch at this end as well. Okay, so thanks for sewing along with me. I hope you enjoyed that making this really useful drawstring bag. Um, please share your makes the ones that you make in our woolly elephant uh, crafters facebook group uh, or email them to me i'll leave the email address down below and then i can share them in our uh, ko-fi gallery as well but there you go